everybody it's patrick at the pitch deck we are going to be going over round five this will be the final round for the cc rtn at mad cards for this particular klatsu that we're going to go against he is bringing ab3 so ab3 is a little bit of a struggle sometimes whenever you are trying to go against the opponent whenever he is a being a lot of stuff but take note he won the die roll and gave me first which i think is a mistake because if you let me go first and i see that you are at ab3 i'm not shooting you at all so your hand could be clunky as hell and you're not leaking damage because maybe if you go ab2 and, and then i go second i'm more inclined to kind of flip off the top and you might leak way more damage but i swear to god pots were going left and right in this rtn earn zero pots were some crazy luck during this rtn so we see a pot plus an arc keep it for the blue for our next turn plus our tomo find all just like the previous game tomo find all turn zeros is so nice as well and we see another in our hand with three blues so not shooting anything not not the him cycle for ab3 because there's just nothing that could get over because there's potion plus ether arc that was on top so he goes with the ninja art of war quote unquote that's kind of the the nickname that they've got it going ancestral something i think i can't even remember what it's called but gives all combo cards plus one so it looks like he will start off with the kadachi we'll just end up taking this this is fine there's no real points to block the kadachi unless it is lethal but at that point you're kind of losing in in the kadachi lock mean that there's only one kadachi but the original atsu like the best katsu equipment loadout is ab2 with breaking scales because breaking scales offers so much so this is just a red fluster fist ending the turn no go again so we end up taking five because it's pumped so we'll end up with a tome giving us five life almost practically taking away that turn and we get tempo back so this is really 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 good so we'll start out with a tome of find all almost max resources so we'll go ahead and draw two cards we'll go back up to 29 and we are starting to uh remember to over pitch or like under pitch since this is our action point we're going to use a red that we can't play basically so we're not stuck ip in ourselves we'll go ahead and see a red flare off the top our top decks are just lining up perfectly again instead of uh blue we're going to straight away use this yellow coming in for four which is really good tempo this is probably like the best that we can see off the top during a toma find all play here really puts pressure on the katsu so he'll a b3 he'll take one and we'll go off the top here it's not the two cost move we want but we'll still play it anyways for damage as we're going to not necessarily put it into our arsenal because we're just going to put this tone back in there and it's clearing the way for another tone play to run into So a quick AB2. So he kind of looks like he's going down in resources where it's um, blue, then yellow, and then from there, um, he's going to pop his Harding Cross Traps, so meaning he's got a red. Pretty easy read, right? Um, this is fine to respond to. We really don't have anything crazy in our hand. Uh, we do have a spindle, but we would have to block five. I think that's honestly what I should do um, here. So I think I should block five here. Um, however, a lot of the time when you block five like that, you don't have the resources in hand because you did harden cross trap. So there could be a follow up punish where I block 
this and he already has a natural whelming gust way which is the most punishing so we're still at a healthy life total and it kind of feeds in with our toma find out plan where we're still wanting to redo what we did on the previous turn but we don't mind if he katsu's here and he's actually doing the katsu which is crazy insane when i've got a pot five card or four cards in hand plus the arsenal so now he's quote unquote shields down and i could kill him here if, I, if my hand was really really good but it's actually a pretty nice indication to see a wildfire being played and i might not have it you can kind of say that i have two wildfires and that's why i went with that so almost kind of like make me have it type of thing so he does go with a descendant it is for free so he doesn't have to pay so it's coming for six and of course he searches for the whelming or the bonds so this is bonds he's gonna search for a fluster fist so here he's gonna be empty-handed i think the best play here is if I were to go with the original plan and go with a really powerful Tom turn again, and we really can't combo without a wizard card in Arsenal, take the first one, and then now Bonds is going to be, it's going to be a four card attack turn. The Bonds needs to be blocked so that way he doesn't regain an Arsenal, and it's punishing, pretty punishing on hopefully our turn that we don't get any whiffs or anything like that, that we could get tempo. So with the two reds that are in our hand a red spindle plus a red tome maybe i could press with a blue and a red spindle but i know another force coming in and i don't want to block that so i want to strip cards in from his hand so i'm going to take this anyways to 16. we can kind of get the life back as well as push damage that's what i thought was a better of the two play I would be sending a red spindle for 16 at, at 16 life which i'm not the biggest fan of because if we're going to send spindle whenever he doesn't have an arsenal i kind of want to do it with a wizard card already in my arsenal basically i want to be able to combo if the opportunity presents itself so we go with a blazing here off the top so this is a little bit awkward but i think i do the right play i think i do something right here so with two floating we have to make sure that this potion is worth it so we're going to take a peek off the top here it's got to be worth 10 or more resource oh sorry 10 or more value right remember that potions with two resources each resource being five points of damage towards a wildfire that's how you calculate deep pots. Um, so we have to, maybe we can see something off the top here. So that's why we go with an opt. See if we can bait one card. It'll be a compounding effect, but it's not too crazy of a compounding effect. So we see another blazing, which isn't it's not great it's four damage worth of value so we're sub we're being like a neg six negative six of value if we toss this if we toss the e-pod out and we can kind of do a reset turn with like the potion being played as our action point and just refill blazing which is why we put it on top first see what he does if he would have a beat anything it would have been at the beginning so more than likely he's going to do it now so we just go ahead and put the ocean in our arsenal and he goes ahead and pitches a yellow or a bonds sorry <laughs> surging strike sorry so he does do a surging strike And he has because he has nothing floating here but i want because i want to take note what what's next after this but we do have a red spindle um i think 
along with two blues and a blazing. But this one I'm actually kind of inclined to block because he doesn't have an arsenal and it could get out of hand pretty quick. So we go ahead and block six. This one I'm actually feeling the block six because we can kind of reset lightly with the potion like I mentioned before. And he ends the turn with a Dishonor. I think I should block this. Um, let me know if you think a blue off the top for Kano is not worth two damage. Like, I'm blocking three, but then maybe I could get a potion. However, I do have a potion that is in my arsenal. The chances are starting to get a little low. Maybe I can get a tome. So, we had blocked with one earlier. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I could have blocked with it and saved my life a little bit more. Two life isn't crazy. If it was a three attack, I probably would do it, but. Um, so we see what's off the top. We can't really do anything with the card because it's a blue bolt here. So we'll keep it on top. And then potion, reset arsenal. So we go with our opponent on a scary five card. And because Katsu's like the five card, it's kind of like a cushion, almost like eyes really like that arsenal play. We like it too. Um, so we'll see what he starts off with. And I think he actually plays it slightly different. I think he can play it slightly different. I I'll, I'll tell you how I think he should have played the turn. But he starts with a descendant. So three, nothing crazy. We wanted to see what he can do. We have a wildfire in our hand plus a tome that's there. So we'll go ahead and say uh, no blocks. Because with this hand, we can do some pretty serious damage if it comes down to it. Um, via tapping out and things like that. So with the search, I think he searches a bond. And then plays it and then searches the, the next one as well. So. So he has, um, I want to say it's two floating, if I'm not mistaken. I can't know for sure, which is, I don't know the card as well. So actually, I might change what I was about to say with how he could change the turn. If it's a zero cost blue, which I think it might be at least a blue, but I'm not zero, sure about the zero cost. Um, we're just going to take this and take it down to 10. We know that there's going to be a hundred wins right after this. So the turn's going to escalate slightly even more. And then the arsenal is still an option as well. So if I block with one card here, he could have an ancestral, um, to push it over for mass trigger draw. Um, there is, I could probably block five here with a blue and a tome and then go to my turn, but then I don't really have a turn. I could just send wildfire for five, but then I'm down to one, one wildfire and I'm really starting to get down in lower life total. So... I say, I say no box. We take the seven and the mass trigger. We're trying to clear up the, the triggers. So he can draw here. Uh, and then he goes with a Kadachi. And he has one floating. So yes, he did have a blue. And then he Razor Reflexes. So he does have Razor Reflex. So there is the punishment that we could have had if we just did a single block on... For the 100 wins. So three, uh, We're going to take this to three. I want to say he has go again. Meaning that that is a zero cost in his pitch. Okay, so the turn that I was thinking is that he could have done Kadachi, Descendant, and then Bonds for four. 
which would be an awkward breakpoint if I decide to block that one, double block, send in Razor, one damage over, then he gets the mass trigger along with the banish trigger. It's already a banish trigger, but you get what I'm trying to say. So I think it could have been a more impactful turn for awkward breakpoints. So for this one, we're going to go off the top. I kind of want to do some damage. He's given me two cards in hand. I took a whole bunch here um, just to try to get some damage in return. I did get some advice from Kataru. That's his username. He is a Katsu main as well as a Kano main. Knows both decks very well. When I was going through this with him, he said I comboed a turn too early, perhaps. Because then I can just give some cards in a certain way and then go about my day for, like, home. Play home, maybe give one card. So, for this, we're deciding on the math. We need to make sure that we can do wildfire. This is sort of like a wildfire lesson because we have blazing. But we need a fourth spell to kill because he has two cards. You have to go through the mind of does he have a blue? Does he have a red? Does he have a double red? All the call all the color combinations need to go through your head. So that's why I do another Banish off the top, and then we pop all of our resources to go to six. With the six, we can do everything here for wildfire, bolt. Here we're doing a little bit of piano playing via Kano combo. With this, we're trying to do the, all the calculations whenever you do a wide or wide combo. Wildfire actually gets hurt the more, the less damage that you put into it, meaning the less resources. It was unfortunate that we had a red to begin with and not full resources. So we go with five resources to start. See if he wants to do anything for priority just in case the random oasis can come in. So we do all of our math. We still have three floating. We pass back. We can do three here with the ones that we have banished. Or we can switch it to where we do blazing if it's anything. So we do, we have a lot of like scenes here that's already cut and um, had a paste together the transition. That's why you see the, the transition there. I did a lot of math already. I'm just kind of skipping ahead of time. So he does have two reds here. And then we go end up with a half combo and still have our arsenal plus um, boots as well. So we send a lot of meaningful damage. Hopefully it's good, right? It's a bit of a tall ask for the reset turn off of a three health 23 down to 17 right or 18 so we get him down to 18 not too crazy or um damage whenever we need a good reset turn so for the reset turn we really need it to be through our turn to push damage and then go maybe into a combo. Kadachi, we're fine. We'll take it down to two. And he's also got two floating. So he sends an attack for two. I think it's a blue luster fist, which I'll comment on the pitch here later. Um, and whenever we go through the uh, 
little bit of Kano activations here. This does not block, right? This does not block. I'm thinking maybe double Razor Reflex to get over to block because I want to send this. I want to send this um, Sonic Boom on my turn. So with that, this doesn't block. We can see if we can strip some of those cards and we get a, the Sonic that we want to do on our turn, that we want to do on our turn, on his turn instead. So we kind of get lucked out with a top deck that's really nice here. We can strip cards out of his hands to guarantee that he doesn't have at least one attack reaction. Because Ancestral plus Razor Reflex does not cover two blocks. Basically three and three for a six block. Because that is exactly six for those two reactions. So he does pay into it. Um, he had two floating, so he AB threes it, and he has a yellow bonds, I think. If I remember correctly, it's a yellow bonds. So we see a yellow spindle here, which could probably eat up one more card. And then we pay into it. It's a reduced cost. And it's coming in for three. And then he AB ones. Block one, we're taking two, right? Yes. Okay. So he is taking two damage. He likes, he likes his arsenal. Or at least the other card in his hand. Uh, so we see a yellow. A yellow spindle, another yellow spindle, I think. Yeah, yeah. Another yellow spindle. Hesitate. We want resources. So we put that on the bottom. Even though it's a zero block card for the potion, it's still blue. I don't think I'm surviving next turn. Even if it's a no block. We cover it up. We successfully tried to get cards out of his hand to make sure, okay, that you don't have any reactions if I can just double block. And for this turn, he comes in with just a red whelming gust wave, right? Just a red one, which is suspect already in and of itself. We have two no blocking cards because our deck is just giving it to us that way. The two potions that we were missing in the beginning. I do have one more depot, so five potions total plus I. So we have six no blocks it doesn't block we see what's off the top here we can just go with the red spindle to block because then we can just get cards back at the end of his turn block if he tries to go with a lethal attack reaction i can try to find stuff that's off the top and i'm only down one resource with this red I would have been nice to see it off the top with the damage turn, of course, but um, he goes with Ancestral Pyramid. It pushes it over one damage. So if I didn't block, he would have actually had lethal there. So he was probably trying to find another Ancestral, Art of War, something to go over one more damage, but um, he didn't get it, which means that the Arsenal is not an attack reaction. So here we go ahead and draw up. And the reason why we keep the D-Pod is because we can play it on our turn if we get two blues. Go so double blue for Kano and then pay into whatever, but that's the only blue that we have. And we need to do damage. This is our reset turn. It's a little bit early, but... Um, sorry, it's a little bit late. The reset turn should have happened a little bit later, but... Uh, we correct our pitch. We don't want the red. We don't want the blazing. We have a blazing in our arsenal. We want to make sure that we have enough resources at our disposal. This is coming in for four. We can see what we can draw for our turn next turn, I think. Uh, take one. 
So he AB3s with two cards, a red and a yellow. So that's good news for us. We're really happy about that. So we bought him this red flare. Get that out of the way. Like I mentioned, we do want to see pretty good resources. And we do. We get three blues plus a lesson in lava. And he goes with the E strike, draw a card. Don't know what was there. But he draws, but then I. I, I told him I get to respond before he draws because it's an additional cost and the effect has not gone through. So with him shields down, we can potentially do something. We can do something pretty good. We've got blazing plus a good bit of resources. We got 12. Sorry, 11. We go off the top and we see a blue spindle. It's a start to see what's on top. We go with a uh, full buff. Oh, we do want to buff it to get the max re read on top. And if anything, it's not great. We can just fix three cards for next turn and double block this anyways. You'll have a full grip, but if it's stuff, something that's not on top is not good. So the third card, the third card that we would be drawing into is a red, uh, red ether flare. So me getting the pump on this blue spindle was actually the best play because I would have um, just sent this different two without the buff. I would have seen blue blue. Probably would have bottomed it. So there's no real um, benefit to not pumping it so i'm doing math really fast um we can pay for the banish off the top the flare that comes in for three and then blazing coming in for nine so we get with the blazing with one floating we're coming in for three taking it down to eight and just one damage over lethal for the win. And I am so, it's so crazy too that I got there off of a half combo. But thanks guys for watching. That was the Mad Cards CC RTN. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed all five rounds. Half combo for the win. Oh my God, I've never done that before.